Hurry, did you? Hmm? Hurry to sign the invitation. Yes. I think Joe wanted to go back to him. Oh, okay. <laughs> You guys all set? All right, good evening. This is the April 22nd, 2013 Rhinebeck Town Board meeting, and we'll start with a pledge. I pledge of allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. For announcements, we have. Um, the open book days at Town Hall for um, your uh, you, grievance day are uh, on which the assessors will be, are available to meet with the property owners to answer questions about their property assessments will be held as follows. May 6th from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. and 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. May 7th from uh, 12 noon till 4 p.m. May 9th 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. and May 11th 9 to 1. Grievance Day is on May 28th, and um, the time is yet to be determined. Uh, there is a burn ban now in effect through May 14th. No burning is allowed. Beginning, May, beginning on May 15th, small brush fires are permitted. For more information, call the DEC, or see the DEC website, www.dec.ny.gov. Um, the, the Dutchess County Resource Recovery Agency is um, hosting or having a... Um, Hazardous Household Electronic Waste Disposal Day here at the Town Highway Garage on Saturday, June 1st. Registration and payments are required before June 1st. You can contact DC Resource Recovery at 463-6020 for more information. Uh, for those who missed rec sign up at Town Hall this past Saturday, there will be sign ups at the pool on weekends beginning Memorial Day. Uh, temporary hours for the assessor's office will be held daily from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. until further notice. It's daily from 9 to 1. Anybody have any announcements? Could we um, have a moment for the Boston mm -hmm. Marathon? Yeah. Sure. Okay. A request for a moment of silence for the uh, victims of the Boston Marathon tragedy. Thank you very much. Thank you. We have approvals for the prior board meeting minutes on April 8th, a motion and second. Motion. A second. Uh, any, um, uh, all in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? That's so moved. Today we have two presentations. The first is from the, on the waterfront dock. So, um, do we have, uh, you guys have a presentation now? You know about this, Jeannie, or no? Uh, Tony, do you want to just explain how the docks went in and, okay. I think since we're lucky enough to get clear water a couple of times this summer, it made it important that we got the docks in. <clears throat> but we had a few questions at, from the board uh, for some specifics, but if you could just fill us in on the background. Sure, Tony Tedisco, Rhinecliffe, and I'm a member of the uh, Rhinecliffe Committee, Waterfront Committee. And uh, as we all know, the docks went in and they're all functional and operational uh, earlier last, earlier in the week. And I, uh, I, I, I'm not too clear on specifically what you're asking at this time regarding the docks. I know there was an issue of uh, insurance, which I think Elizabeth covered. And there was a, uh, well, there, there was some open issues there, the height of the dock, but it was a little unclear. I can unclear. speak to that, yeah. I can speak to that okay. after you. Uh, so specifically, what what would you like me to? Uh... Well, let me ask you. I mean, it looks like somebody requested a presentation today on the waterfront dock, and apparently you guys weren't. Did you ask the, who asked for the presentation period here? Was I, something? We made a board. We had a board action. Patricia. This is more of a discussion item then. I think, yes. Right? Yeah. Okay. I so. so, all right. Apologize. Just to clarify some of those open issues, and I guess uh, the. We have three levels of dock there. We have uh, the kayak docks. We have the, the staging dock, which is about 18 inches above the water level. 
and we have the ferry dock, which is about three feet. And then, of course, there's a bulkhead, which varies somewhere between probably five and eight feet, depending on the tide. So the question came up, is the ferry dock suitable for a small to medium-sized boat? And I, I've not heard anything to that it, it, it is not suitable for it. As a matter of fact, I've only heard positive things about the dock being there. So uh, the question, I, I guess in one of Elizabeth's, or, or an email, the question that the, our insurance provider was concerned about the step did they mean to step out of a boat onto the dock or the step getting onto the ramp? So um, a little unclear. I'll just back up. We had a board we had a board action not to put the ferry dock in because we didn't have ferry service. But the dock went in anyway. And we were notified the day I was notified the day before it was going in. Right. And so then we all kind of said, Well, we as the board voted not to put it in. Why is it going in? Who took the action to put it in? against the board's vote. So that's where everything started. Okay. Well, I, you know, as I said in my emails, and I believe there was an email mail probably shortly after the town received a, a letter from Sandy Henney that, said, that indicated we should put the dock in anyway. And then the, my understanding when I heard that you had voted the dock was not going in, I guess it was was that the information that I heard on which the board based its decision was erroneous. And so I wanted to clarify that in some of the emails that went around last Monday, I believe. And then, as I said in an email, I received a, a call from Elizabeth and clarified, well, we discussed the doc, and it was still unclear why one thought it was not appropriate to have that dock there. So I guess the decision was made. Well, I think because the dock originally came about <clears throat> because of this ferry. Was that correct? correct? We never had the dock before the proposed ferry. That's correct. So <clears throat> now that we had no ferry, we as a board, an entire board, didn't see that we needed to go through the expense of putting the dock in since we had no longer had a ferry. And from my phone conversations, there doesn't appear to be any new ferry that's going to come out of nowhere and just appear. So that's where that's why we, as a board, took that action. And um, then, as far as the intermunicipal agreement, I, I, I believe it says that Kingston is supposed to pay for the the installation of the dock. Well, my understanding. Maybe we could take for, one, for, you know, one question at a time. The first question is, if there's no ferry, why do we need a dock and go through the expense of putting the dock and then we can go to the okay. intermunicipal right. agreement? Let's well, in answer to that, uh, Gina, there was no additional expense in putting this dock in. And as I said in an email, we have a, we have a grant that's looking to put more docking, more docking facility in. So here we have a dock that is paid for with no additional expense to put it in or remove it because Kingston has been abiding, abided by their agreement to take it over, bring it back, and store it for us. There's no expense there. So here we have the opportunity to have a dock, and that's why I was perplexed by the fact that the board voted not to put it in. When you and, say there's no additional expense, isn't there a labor time to put that uh, ramp in? And uh, I believe the highway department charges us for their time. Yes, they do. Well, I mean, yeah. I, I guess and I don't know what, what that is. I, I can't imagine it's uh, a large amount if it's going to take. We've done this in a day up until this year, which took two days for a variety of reasons. We had kind of rough water out there. but. Uh, I mean, if, if the expense is there, I would imagine it's minimal. And I, and I, not only recently, but in the past when we were looking at additional docks, we'd certainly, if the board needs support from the fire department, the sheriff's department, or the police department, I think they'd get it. This is the only, we're fortunate to have a deep water dock here. Uh, I'm talking about the bulkhead in any dock. It's the only one between uh, Hudson and Poughkeepsie. And if, if, in, if there was an emergency out there, I'm sure every, every emergency 
force would want to have as much docking there as possible. We're not, we're, and we're looking at putting more docking in for recreational. What, does use. the clear water tie up on the bulkhead or the ferry dock? The bulkhead. Okay, mm. so it's a large boat. Okay, so, so the it ferry dock. Affect mm -hmm. that. It's easier to get, as I'm, I understand, it's easier to get. It, it, it's better to have a higher dock even if the boat is lower, because typically boats have a means of of stepping onto a, a seat area and stepping out rather than conversely. So going who's going to use the ferry dock? Why? What use is oh, it going to be made? Okay. Other boats who've, who've uh, landed at the, at the dock there have used it. I mean, the pr a problem we had is boats would dock there when the ferry was supposed to be docked. That's why we had to put signs up that you couldn't dock between certain times. These are private pleasure boats that are? For the most part, or, or a small cruise boat if the town allows. But let me, um, let me just add to this. I mean, you, you, the comment was that um, because there's no ferry agreement with this one ferry operator, then there's no, no, no need for a dock. If you don't have a dock, then there's no dock program, and there's no way we're going to get a program if there's no dock for somebody else to come in and, and bid on this. So really, you're killing the whole idea if you don't have a dock. That's correct. There's no and way there to are go. Efforts there's being made, Tom there's no, I know there's people in Kingston who are trying to right. fulfill that need to do a better program for a taxi service that would not be so reliant on one person or, or whatever, but uh, there are some waterfront um, businesses that are looking for people. I don't know how successful they are to, to fill that need. But if there's no dock, then forget it, then we kill the program. There's no you know, economic development concept here. Um, one of the reasons why we shouldn't have a dock mentioned last week was that the dock was a uh, hindrance to other boats coming in, other activities. And I took it that the committee had said that, but I've come to find out that the committee never represented that. So I don't know where that came from, and I forget who mentioned it, but it somebody, somebody said that the dock is a problem for other boating activity and access to the river. So that's why I didn't mention it, because I thought the committee said it, but apparently that's not true. I think this was so, a communication. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, yeah. Me. So, you know, you guys, if you guys want to kill a waterfront project, then, you know, just do away with the dock. That's fine, but there's, it's not, it's not going to happen without the dock. At least we have a, a, an opportunity alive here that the committee supports and have been try, you know, trying to develop. Well, it's uh, obviously not killed because the dock was put in well, thank regardless God. Yeah, yeah. of our Well, I, su I support that. That's but, where the issue, um, issue came, I think. So, uh, you know, Tony mentioned that we do have a unique uh, waterfront uh, access to our community with this uh, dock. So dock that's was something we should ignore also. Of the board, ultimately, that ultimately, should be clarified, yeah. sure. Can I just speak to, I think there was a communication breakdown and words like killing and, uh, you know, a project is not what this is about. For me, it's about communication and process. And once we found out what the issues were, we scrambled to address them quickly. I think really it's nice you're here because we can talk about this process. Sure. Uh, our concerns were that the intermissible agreement would still be in effect without the ferry service and that we wouldn't have any insurance liability with uh, a large dock for smaller boats. Our insurance carrier jumped in and sent us a barrage of information and I, I trust you guys. I, I think I forwarded it to Gina, did I forward it? I didn't have every committee member's email, so I forwarded it where I could. But they're going to follow up on that. And, and they're sending an inspector. They are sending an inspector to look at it so that we could mitigate any um, any exposure we may have for smaller pleasure crafts using a dock meant for a ferry. So that was one concern of the board, and the other was that the intermissible agreement would still be in effect even if the ferry service was uh, was suspended. Sure. Well, I, has anybody read the intermunicipal agreement recently? I uh, have it. Recently? I have it here. I can't say I've read it recently. I, just, but, oh, okay. yeah. well, I, I thought we'd ask that. that we just verify that it's still good. You know, I, don't, and, and, I mean, to date, they haven't, they've been starting I'd be happy it to read it. I yeah. think it's in effect until 2015, and I think I remember there being a, uh, um, I'll, I'll look at it while you're yeah. talking. The, the uh, city of Kingston has been storing the dock, yeah. and as a matter of fact, this time they took it upon themselves to bring it over. Typically, they bring it over with the fer with the fireboat, which was not with their fireboat, which was not yet in the water. So they actually contracted or got someone else to do it. But uh, Elizabeth, you talked about communication, and that was what to me was was, was perplexing because 
and I know I realized the meeting before uh, the, the the waterfront committee meeting, Gina, you had to leave early, and I we discussed the dock after that. But there were some emails prior to that, and no one communicated with the committee about the. The, even the thought of removing, of not so the, allowing the dock to go in. That's what was perplexing well, to me. that was before we heard that the ferry was going to be suspended. Well, well it was, was really because we didn't have the second meeting in March. The, the timing of all this oh. got messed up okay. because we didn't have that second meeting. So that, it, it all got squeezed into the, the short period of time. And as you know, there's a new administration over in Kingston at this time, and Mayor Gallo that he rose to the occasion and he was not even aware of the details of the agreement, but again, they delivered the dock and it, it was not an issue. But if, I, I think it would be behoove the, the committee, uh, the board to, and I can assist there to get support if that's what the board needs to, to allow the dock to go in every year from the emergency services. Uh, again, the fire department, the, the, the sheriff's office, I know they were in the past, and I'm sure they are now, certainly in favor of having that dock there, or, or as many docks as you can. Again, if there was an issue out there, that's what, that's what we should have. We have a hospital within two miles. We have a fire department right up the hill. Is there anything else? Not for me. Um, yeah, I would so, just mm -hmm. urge you guys to uh, look at the guidelines by our insurance company and follow them to the best that you can. I'll make sure I send and, them out to you guys. I yeah, I did, I did receive it, but I don't and, know if And um, they'll be sending an inspector, and we'll see what mm -hmm. she says. And uh, she'll either come on her own or notify us if she wants someone to meet her there. I think it would also be useful to know how much that uh, ferry list right. dock mm -hmm. is in fact used. Can you speak to that? Uh, and whether there are uh, complaints mm -hmm. maybe where better off right. with some other kind of dock for kayaks if, if that's uh, uh, what the use is. But if there's any way to give us data on it, you know, it's the first I heard the justification that there may be an emergency. Uh, well, I'm down there often. I don't live too far away from yes. there. Okay. I yeah. see boats docked there, and on occasion I've had to tell boats that the ferry was coming in that they needed to leave. But also, to your point, Joe, uh, I've heard a couple of kayakers told me they appreciated that dock being there because the staging dock cannot be used, for, you know, for a boat to stay there when, if somebody went up the hill. But uh, I've seen large boats at the kayak docks, and that's frustrating to kayakers, I'm sure. So having another dock there is certainly beneficial. But let me assure you, we're not acting out of general meanness that uh, uh, where we came not from. Not this time. Uh, I don't own a boat, so. Where, where we came from was it had been represented that the reason for the dock was the ferry, and then we all got letters uh, or a copy of a letter saying there will be no ferry. So that really was as simple as that, the motivation. And I think the March me missed meeting is a good point. Yeah, and, and our concern is in the, the intermunicipal agreement, it says everything's honored as long as the ferry services have been procured for any given year. It's in paragraph seven. So that, that's where we were going. Ah. So, so we, there's no ferry service, so they're not yeah. bound to honor. And we have a new insurance broker, a right. new, new insurance carrier, which is different than the multitude of reasons. But with the new information, I would hope that the board take another look at the, the need for this uh, dock, and certainly, as I pointed out before, there is a grant out there for more docking, and here we have a free dock, so why not use it? Where are you going to put more docks? We well, like, there's a, there's a study right now, and, and when that comes back, we'll, we'll know what the best uh, decision is. And is this grant going to pay for the maintenance and the labor no, to put it in, and, or is this going to be another uh, taxpayer expense? It's a feasibility study to look at more docking facility, not the actual go-ahead. Hopefully, there'll be grants available to do something like that. And you know how tight it is there, so it's need a study done. Also, just so you know, I have my two requests for trees out, so I'll let you know. Great. Okay. Thank you, Tony. Yeah, uh, I don't. I don't recall a motion. I remember talking about it, but and. 
saying, you know, what we think, but I don't remember a motion in the second and a vote on not to have the dock made. I just want to, just to cover our backs, but I need it as a clerk, so. I think we all decided, and I didn't hear any dissent, that uh, because the ferry wasn't going to run, that uh, we would not put the dock in. Right. Certainly was my recollection. Okay. Do we want to pop up to the, the Clearwater thing while the committee's here? Sure. Yeah. Sounds good. Which one is that? I think it's number six. No, seven, five, I don't know. Five. Tab six. Tab six. Tab six, res business item five. So we're going to, uh, we, we have a second presentation, but he's not here anyway at this point in time. So we're going to uh, jump into a, an item that would pertain to the waterfront, and it would be um, uh, item number five for business. And it's a resolution authorizing, um, I'm sorry, yeah, a resolution authorizing the sloop Clearwater to dock at the Rhinecliff. And uh, is that for a specific date or is that for the whole thing? We actually center? have the dates now, don't we? You have dates in front of you, Gina? I don't have them in front of me. Do you know them, Patricia? It would be Friday, the last day of June. Oh. Okay. So, um, thank you. Yeah. So, uh, you said the last Saturday you said in? The last Friday in May. Okay, last Friday in May will be the third. The first Saturday, so two days. Okay, so uh, May t 31st and June 1st, just two days, okay. So, a motion and second to approve. Motion. Second. Um, all in favor, aye. Well, aye. Right, before we do that, can we ask the committee what their view is? Should we approve it? Not approve it? Just approve it. Just approve it. We, yeah, we uh, absolutely, it's a great thing for our being an asset for absolute uh, pressure for the for, uh, work. Joe, thanks for asking. That was great. <laughs> We do have a waterfront day in that weekend, right? That's, uh, That's why it's here. It's right. It's here. That's June 1st. Right. right. So June 1st is waterfront day, and we'll add that to the announcements. So. Okay. Okay, agree. That's great. So um, all in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? It's so moved. Before our second presentation, could I have Alan Shearer speak to us about Time Warner? We're working on revisiting that contract. It, yeah, it won't fun. take long. We Any, just missed it in the last meeting. Good. <laughs> just uh, uh, I got interested in the Time Warner. Hi. Al, you're a resident. You're, you're not Scher, here. Yeah. yeah, you're not here to represent Time Warner or anything. You just okay. <laughs> um, I just had a series of transactions with Time Warner, and I got curious about what the agreement was between Time Warner and the town. So when I, when we looked into it. We discovered that the current agreement was signed in 1992, mm -hmm. and, a, and a few things have happened since then that I don't think the agreement foresaw, namely that uh, Time Warner is now offering telephone service, and they're now offering uh, internet service, none of which existed back then. And uh, they're paying the town 5%, but I'm not sure of what. Um, they paid the town something like $65,000 this year as a royalty, and it seems like $1.3 million, which is what, what that would be 5% of, is, a, is kind of light for what they're probably pulling out of the town. So I wanted to go back and look at the agreement, or at least find out what they think the agreement was. We sent them an email. That, I sent them an email. Uh, I called. They said, you have to send us an email. I sent an email, and there was, it was like went into the black hole. A um, couple of issues uh, that I see, one of which that I had, I had two phone lines with them, and I wanted to take one away and put it on Vonage. It's all voice over internet, and they wouldn't let me take the number. <coughs> By the way, Frontier won't, won't let you take your number either. Everybody else in the world, you can take your number anywhere. So there's something wrong with that, in my opinion. The other thing that Time it's Warner... negotiable. That is a, an item that I found to be negotiable. Is it really? So we should bring that into yeah. the contract. Yeah, I mean, the, the other problem, which was more of a pain, was when I first signed up for internet service with them, I wanted to go with uh, Earthlink as the ISP, the internet service provider. I called them and upgraded my 
uh, the performance of my internet to the maximum. And they said, you can't stay with, Road, with uh, Earthlink, you have to go with Roadrunner, which is their in-house ISP. So I had to switch all my email addresses, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, they're bundling, which in my opinion is illegal. And, uh, you know, it seems like we ought to put their feet to the fire in terms they're of what their contract is. There's also fiber optic, is that? No, oh, there's no fiber correct? optic yeah. in the town at all. They, they claim there is, but there isn't. I asked the, the repair guys come to my house all the time because I complain when, this, when the bandwidth goes down and they're always there tuning things up and I've talked to them. I, I know they're all on a first name basis with me. There's no fiber in the town, even though the salespeople tell you there is. So we're, we're kind of on that. Alan Are you, you were, oh good. Um, keep in mind, uh, there's a lot of time where it doesn't reach everybody also. Um, and one of my concerns is that doesn't, there's no service at Ferncliff Nursing Home. There's 300 people out there. Um, and I just verified that again, that it's still not there. And I tried to deal with that a couple of years ago and they, they said it wasn't, uh, it was too expensive to get it there. So anyways, um, in, as part of this, you, you got uh, 300 people there that need it. <laughs> Yes, I mean, it, you know, I agree. Yeah, there's a lot of problems, <clears throat> most of which wasn't anticipated in 92. Mm -hmm. So it seems like a new agreement would be in order. The other thing is, is it's not an exclusive agreement. We could go get other people to come in, too. Are you taking this on as a project for us? I'm willing to do that. Um, I'm an engineer, electrical engineer. I was in, in fact, I was around when the Internet was invented um, at MIT, and uh, or at least... People at MIT think they invented it, but that's okay. Um, and, and my two older daughters are both lawyers, so I have a legal staff. <clears throat> Thank you, Alan. You're welcome. Right, so we'll Is keep that a free posted. legal staff? Yes. It has been so far. Well, one other question. Do you know of any other towns around here that have renegotiated with Time Warner? No, I'm not, I haven't done any research because I wanted to see the agreement first. Hmm. Because you re obviously realize it's a huge project, and yeah. Time Warner is not the easiest uh, company to deal with. Yeah. Or, uh, that I already knew. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. So we're going to put our uh, second presentation back. He's still not here. It's from our CEO. Um, we can move yeah, on. I think he's coming a little bit later. later. Okay. Right. We can move on to liaison reports. About what? Oh, okay, come, you can uh, come to the mic. I'm Herman Tejan, resident of the town of Rhinebeck. I was a former member of this board, and I have been associated with the waterfront for about 15 or 20 years. So I think I know a little bit what I'm talking about. First of all, there is the issue of the lack of motorboat docks. Initially, the canoe kayak docks were put in for a sole purpose, to promote paddle craft. And this was done years ago when we first put these docks in at the request of the folks who were involved in the skull uh, activity. We have a very active group here. Uh, they, because we didn't get them in soon enough, they, of course, had to move elsewhere. The canoe kayak docks are not intended for motorboats. They are not heavy enough, they don't have the cleats. And by the way, ladies and gentlemen of the board, I have been boating the river for 38 years. So I think I know a few things about boating. The, uh, there was a project to put in motorboat docks. We were going, we had a contract, but a prior board canceled that. Those docks were to be of similar uh, uh, style uh, with the riding up on these uh, rails, and they were supposed to go around the end of the um, uh, bulkhead, mm -hmm. leading out from the uh, staging dock in the ramp and going around. I think there were about five planned because we had to allow, could not go any further because otherwise we would have uh, uh, made it uh, problematical for larger boats to tie up. 
had those stocks been put in, we would not have the problem of addressing adequate tie-ups for uh, larger boats. Now, getting back to the situation of the ferry dock. The ferry dock is the only dock that is convenient for a larger boat to tie up. I, I have a 28-foot boat. That is the dock I would tie up on. You cannot tie up on the uh, dock in the uh, ramp, the launch ramp, because that's where people, uh, when they come in and out, need to tie up, get on their boat, and go. All right, that's intended to be a temporary dock. So that's history, and this board should be aware of that history. We're not going to be able to put in motorboat docks today for the same cost that would have been prevalent back eight or nine years ago. Now, we have an issue where this dock almost did not go in. It is my opinion that the, board, that the liaison to any committee should be an advocate of that committee, should be informed of the work of that committee, should be zealous about the work of that committee, and act as the representative to the other members of the board. I don't think that happened. That is why, unfortunately, another member of the board who was not the liaison was the one, according to the emails that went through my box, made this whole thing happen that we at least got the motorboat dock in. And that's another thing that I'm going to point out to the board. The liaison is a two thing. The liaison is supposed to feed back to the committee the views of the board, be they financial or pro program-wise, and then take back to the board the views of the committee. That's why the liaison system was put into effect. Erwin, I don't want to. I don't yeah. want right. to. I, 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 I just. I mean, it, one more there, there point. was a there was a time frame issue. We didn't have a second meeting that month, so I don't want to point out liaisons. But I don't want to. There's no. It's, it was a confusion, a time of confusion period, and there's nobody to point out on the board who was at fault, who was not. So um, well, things I, happened, and, and we got over them. So let's just, I don't want, I want to move on Also, I want to point out there will be a request uh, coming that we need some more safety equipment in order to, uh, for our personnel working on launching and pulling out the docks. Now, that is being worked on because, as you all know, when the docks are put in, the water uh, temperature is about 45 or 50, and when they go out, it is cold. Anybody falling in that water without adequate equipment, uh, it could be a serious medical issue. So I'm, uh, I, we are working on that, and hopefully the board will support us. That's a one-time uh, uh, investment. The equipment can be used uh, again and again. So I hope that uh, I know nobody on this board is a boater. A number of us on the Waterfront Committee are boaters or sailors. So we are aware of the river, and we love the river. And I have to thank Tony and Pat, who are, uh, are uh, working on this committee for the great work they are doing, and the board should recognize them for their hard work. Thank you. Just um, let me, uh, I mean, we l I like to see committee chairs come to meetings, too, and to present, um, uh, I mean, I do it with the cemetery committee, whatever I have is to come up to address the board. It, it kind of uh, helps us out. We have a lot on our plate too, and you know, you guys do, but um, it certainly is the way I like to see things done when the committee comes up to the town board and say what they want, and, uh, and then we can question and so on, rather than go off of what somebody hears and so on. So, uh, Tony. some issue with some of the equipment there, and I'm glad you did, thank you. Uh, Bobby will, Bobby Fitzpatrick will talk to you and we will talk to you about what's needed there, because some of the equipment that's there, some of the cabling that's used to lift a, probably a 2,000 pound piece of equipment was precariously over the heads of two or three of these folks, and it really needs to be replaced. So it's not a, a great expense, but, and that's to put all the docks in, not the ferry dock, it, it was for the others. So, just so you're aware, just to elaborate on that a little bit. We did also, you guys might not be aware, we did approve to buy a new, um, what's that little cart thing called? Ramp, um, 
dolly? No, to to carry to tow the ramps. You know, oh, for the hydro trailer. Flat the trailer, trailer. Thank you. The thing. Yeah. The wheels. <laughs> that thing. Oh, that's good. Yeah, we did consider that that the use of the ferry installation would be a reason that we would go ahead and approve what was an unapproved and unbudgeted expense. So it's not like we not don't Not for use think of, of the, for the ferry dock, for the other dock. Yeah, for the other yeah, docks. Okay. Because yeah. the ferry dock will continue to go be stored across the river. But Bobby told me he's getting the prices for the cabling. So Okay, uh, terrific. Uh, so you're but, aware of But Herman, you were talking about the wetsuit thing, right? We, we need safety equipment uh, uh, for any personnel because if they fall in, uh, it's a hypothermia issue. Right. So, yeah, and also, that uh, I, I, I think Bobby, uh, I, he has a life preserver which uh, should be used or anybody else working on the launching and taking out of the docks should have life preservers on. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to clarify, Kingston does bring the dock over. We don't put that dock in, correct? That's correct. No, that's, well, we put the that's ramp part, in. partly correct. They bring it over. We install it. We install it. They, they just yeah. put it in. What, what it amounts to is just putting a pin in the roller to, to latch it to mm -hmm. the, the uh, shoreline. They bring it over and they, 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 they deliver it and pick and return it. Uh, and they store it on their side, not on our side. They yes, that's what the yeah. agreement calls But the, this dock is the same dock that they have in their marinas over there. It's, it's their specs, it's their designs, and, and their engineers design this Correct. thing. A lot of them, they have it, the lower ones, most hard ones, that, that is similar to the same design as the docks. They have that medium and small. Tony, we, went, we don't let people... Uh, uh, keep their boat on that ferry dock and go for lunch. Uh, it, it, I assume that that's not a uh, permanent or uh, a, a mooring place uh, for for a boat for an hour or so. I assume that it's just to pick up somebody and let somebody off. Is it? People have uh, there and gone up, I guess, for lunch and just moving on the floor. But there's nothing. So what happens if another boat wants to come in? First come, first serve, yes. Or they'll dock it if they're large enough at the bulkhead. Or it's probably large enough to dock two boats, but I'm not. Is Have you right? had any issues with uh, people uh, the, the, the hogging the uh, dock? The only, the only issue we had is when the ferry right. was coming in, as I mentioned before. Yeah. I Does anyone overnight? Overnight? Yes. Do they not, need not permission often, for they that? Yeah. Do they need permission for that? Yeah. They probably should. Well, we I could we could just we that. could say that we we could not allow it. You know, we could allow not allow it and then um, enforce it somehow. I mean, we'd have to make or it. Or do we need to? I don't know. Well, it might be okay for people to spend the night. I don't know. Point, I think the board let, when this surfaced uh, last year or a few years back. We talked about putting a sign up where one would have to get permission from the board if they want, especially if they want to dock overnight. I think that was more out of somebody wanted a dock to pick up passengers mm -hmm. on a more commercial basis. Mm -hmm. But there's no signage there now that talks about it. Yeah. Well, might... That's what the clear way you have to approve their saying that that's more commercial. Again, I think this is an issue for the committee to talk about and make a recommendation yeah, to us rather than. Us popping off the top of our heads. I'm Bill Weichen, uh, Rhinebeck uh, resident, and been on a committee for I guess over six years or so. Uh, I am a boater, not a boater as opposed to uh, Hermitesian, a sail boater. I, I come in there with five tons of ballast and six foot draft, uh, I used the, the dock, the larger dock. You may want to designate it because it was used, it was intended as a ferry dock, but it's not like a dock like the Staten Island ferry boat with ramps and whatever, it's a dock. And it's very appropriate for larger vessels to use it as opposed to the dinghy dock. It saves wear and tear on the dinghy dock because some people have used that and pulled out the cleats. So. 
it is uh, an asset to the waterfront there. And we want, may, I guess from henceforth, be designated as the ferry dock. I'm Meg Tedisco, and I do much better when I just take notes. I'm not good at talking. Um, and I'm not a member of the Waterfront Committee. Um, but just listening to the discussion on the intermunicipal agreement, um, I'm thinking it might be a good idea to pin down what Elizabeth referred to. I forget. I think it was paragraph 6 or page 7. Paragraph 7 and paragraph 5. Yeah. Um, since this was a collaborative project between Rhinebeck and Kingston that both uh, groups be on board um, with the idea that there is not a ferry service, there is not going to be a ferry service, there's no chance of a ferry service um, before decisions are, are made or thought about um, in terms of what should be at the dock or what should not. So. You know, to Tom's point, you know, whether or not there is a ferry service, it does have to be addressed in the um, IMA, but it's a link to the two towns, and that's a good thing. I'm more concerned with the crossings and dottings of the, you know, to protect us. Yeah, I mean, I, I was thinking we wouldn't want to be in a position, we, Ryan, I wouldn't want to be in a position of um, uh, scuttling of something that Kingston might have in process. That we didn't know that. Right. Well, you know, it's a, uh, it's. I mean, it just reflects the importance of the waterfront to the community. It's, it's, yeah, it's how it's, I'm taking it. So it's a very important part of Rhinebeck. I think even on your, um, the, the computer, uh, computer mass head or something that you have the river. I don't know if it's actually the river. It's probably a, a, a stock photograph somewhere. It's but like, anyway, I, like this George. is an interesting thing that I think you should know about. Um, I'm, I'm down there all the time. I watch it. It's really enjoyed by so many people. I'm not a boater. I love whatever we can do to make it more user-friendly <clears throat> to a certain extent. There is a, a tug school in Kingston, and they... They, they train right there in Rhinecliff um, with big barges, uh, how to, how to um, uh, land this dock, uh, land this barge using our dock. You, I mean, you talk about insurance. I mean, I'd like to know, are we covered for something like that? I mean, this is a, I see it all the time. I mean, I, we, we've discussed it briefly. I mean, but it's not up to us to say, should we let them do it? I mean. I like it. I mean, it's fine, but it's, it's wear and tear on our, our dock. They so, tie up on our Yeah, they, they, they tie up. Um, they train. They, they go off. They come back. They go off. They come back. And this, this has been going on for a couple of years now. Well, so. it's certainly worth contacting them. and I'm sure they have liability insurance, mm -hmm. and, but that's something that, yes, we should check in with them. If you get me their name, I'm happy to call them. I'll try to f figure that out. And find out, may and maybe we can charge them some fee. Yeah, why not? I, that, I would think. All right, you give right. me their... I'll, I'll try to do that. Thank you. Sure. And just to correct Herman's statement that there's nobody on the board who's a boater, I've had, had a boat uh, for about 20 years on the river. Um, but I no longer have it. Uh, You're welcome to come out I'll take you up on that. Quick comment, Dodd Crane, uh, village resident. Uh, I was either on the board or just prior to on the board, there was a significant discussion about the development of the waterfront. I would recommend that the board go back and look at the meeting minutes, uh, which led to the rejection of uh, certain portions of the dock development. At that time, there were, as I recall, significant concerns on the part of particularly Rhinecliff residents, about the volume, size, and noise related to how many boats might be uh, uh, appearing at the dock, depending on how much it was expanded. So there were, there were some legitimate public reasons why that plan was rejected. And as the Waterfront Committee proceeds with its thinking, I think everybody should review that history 
and see if that still stands or not, and you as a board can form your opinions based on that re uh, previous examination of the issue. Thank you. All right, um, appreciate your comments. We're going to move on with the agenda, uh, but thanks for your comments. So we'll continue this. Um, still have a little bit of time before the second. We're going to move on to business items. Thank you, Alan. Uh, item one is a resolution for approving the um, Master Treasury Services Management Agreement with M&T Bank. Motion. Second. Look, just to discuss it. Um, I think the agreement, frankly, is outrageous. Uh, they are asking us to confirm that uh, there's been no violation in the past, that there's going to be no violation in the future. Indemnities only run one way. Um, we have to hold them uh, uh, harmless from everything. Uh, it is, uh, uh, I think, a terrible agreement that we've been presented with. Um, the question is, what do we do about it? We could sign it and shut up and uh, uh, pray that we never have a problem. We could ignore it and see if they follow up. Uh, on it and at that point uh, uh, try to get out uh, some of the more egregious uh, things or we could raise the issue uh, with them. Is there a deadline for this? No, they just uh, said it's a replacement, can we sign it? Uh, one approach is uh, let's not do anything and see if they raise it. And at that point, uh, uh, say that uh, we don't want to say that uh, they have never violated the agreement. Who knows if they violated the agreement? We haven't made any kind of uh, inquiry. So at least at this point, I think we ought to ignore it. And uh, let's see if they raise the issue and then uh, discuss it with them. Yeah, we'll just hold it over. Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, is there any problem with not approving it? That we don't, know of? They'll raise it. They're, okay. they're not going to uh, cut you off without saying anything. All right. All right. So um, we're not going to um, make a motion on this unless there's an objection to it. Okay. Item two is a resolution approving the abstract 4B vouchers V362 through V4. 18 for seventy-five thousand nine hundred and six dollars and thirty cents. Motion. Second. Uh, any discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? It's so moved. Item three is a resolution approving the preliminary capital project for 2013 abstract for four thousand eight hundred eighty-one dollars and three cents. Motion. Second. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? It's so moved. I'm abstaining. Abstain when abstaining. Item four is a resolution approving authorizing the hire of seasonal worker to collect to collect brush and leaves. Motion. Second. Second. This is John Kilmer at the landfill. Is this still once a month? That's yeah. the, the relationship. It'd be the last day of uh, each month, month. The, until the first snowfall. And uh, I guess. To me, this brings up the beaver topic. Are we doing it? We, we can't go through that road right now. We're going to have to, to uh, have the drop off across from the maintenance building and then move it. Okay, but uh, work will start soon on that road? Yeah. or yeah. You've ordered the supplies that we yeah, authorized. Yeah, they're on order. They're coming. Is, is the brush drop off the last Saturday yes. of the month? And that goes for this month? Yes. Thank you. Okay. So um, all in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Uh, item five we approve was a clear water at the Rhinecliff dock on May 31st and June 1st. Item six is resolution authorizing the purchase of specialized sand for the ball fields. Motion. Second. Um, any discussion on that? Thrilled about it. Okay. All in favor, aye. 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 
opposed? So moved. Item seven is a resolution authorizing the temporary part-time, temporary hiring of a part-time office worker for up to 75 hours to perform data research, updating and migration in the new website. Motion. Second. Uh, Elizabeth explained this earlier. Yeah. Elizabeth, this is a, about the data migration that's in the budget and it's been seconded. Okay. Um, we, uh, we have a new uh, website, Drupal Gardens, and we've been desperately trying to migrate our data from the old uh, outmoded website to our new website. Uh, it's very labor intensive. We did budget for a labor in it uh, this budget season, and um, we, I kicked it around with the web committee, and we came up with a great, uh, already someone, an employee here who's willing to get trained and do it. Okay. Any, any further discussion? No. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? That's so moved. Item eight pertains to our um, presentation, so we'll hold that over. Um, and um, item nine is a resolution for the standard workday and reporting resolution for employees. Motion and second. Motion. All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Well, I, I was waiting for you to get to the discussion to say, I'm not sure I really understand uh, uh, this. Second. Uh, I'll second. second. This is about, um, I guess, the retirement, um, New York State retirement system. They want, um, uh, it's, it's to fulfill their requirements from Shelley to get um, hours on employees. For their pension. This right. corrected the mistake that we had in the original one. Yes, this is just a. This is just yeah. per uh, the state and the mechanism for which we report no, people's pensions. No, I understand pensions. it. Well, I was but explaining there was a it mistake to, in the other. to okay. Joe. I guess what's throwing me some of these things like assessors aid the normal workday seven hours. You should talk to Shelley about it because it's 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 really a mechanism and there's it's. So it doesn't matter what we put down. If we change this, she'll have to go back and I I believe alter 20 years worth of records yeah, so correct, actually, this yeah. is yeah. this is a no-brainer well the, the assessor's aid is a 35 hour week so that's why it's seven huh. do we have an assessor's aid donna. That, yes what yes. Donna. oh that's donna i thought it was rochelle um any further discussion no all in favor aye aye, aye. opposed that's so moved <coughs> Item 10 is authorizing the solicitation for bids for the purchase to purchase a truck for the maintenance department. Motion. Second. Discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? That's so moved. Item 11 is um, a resolution approving town hall use application for the Rhinebeck Legion Band. Motion. Second. Um, all in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? That's so moved. John, do we have a calendar? Because these are multiple dates, could we've discussed having a calendar posted in the in the hallway of who's got the town hall on specific dates? We use the Google Calendar. We have it on our computers. Um, I kind of like it in the hallway. Could. Why? Why? I mean, he has to change so it. And see it. He's a schedule keeper. He. Keep the clerk's hey, never mind. office. I'm I just. Think it's kind of nice when you come in and you say, "Oh, who's the group that's in there?" And you can just look on the calendar and say, "Our website." It will be on our new website once we migrate the data to okay, it. I'll use okay, my, so let's my get with the new. To look it up. Less okay. paper, more online. Whatever. <laughs> Item 12 is the uh, resolution approving the intermunicipal agreement with the Rhinebeck Central School District. And motion is second. Motion. Motion. Second. Second. Um, um, discussion. Every year at budget time, we say, well, shouldn't the school district pay for tax cert uh, uh, work? And, um, you know, maybe this year. I can we, speak to that. No, uh, well, let, let, me, uh, let me finish. Maybe this year we ought to raise it with the school board early enough so that it fits in with the budget. We actually have a meeting and we don't uh, uh, get a perfunctory thing saying no. 
I guess other towns are starting to do it. Well, I, I guess the other as the liaison to the assessor's office. I've spoken with our attorney about this, and I think Tom was even there for uh, with for one of the with Karen. One of a uh, no. Mm -hmm. There's no absolutely no legal. Uh, mechanism for them to comply. They are allowed to have Arlington, other school districts have their own attorneys uh, put forth this, the cert cases because they want to protect the tax bases even more uh, rigidly than towns. And I think that's the way that flows, not them paying for us. If you'd like to talk to them, I, th I think, you know, you could. I think the board ought to talk uh, to them. The fact no that- No legal precedent for well, it. The Pardon board me? could go to them and ask them to have their attorneys. We have to, the we, or? the assessors are within the town. We have to um, see these certiorari cases. We can't give it up to the school district. But Elizabeth, we do know that in some school districts are chipping in. Now, you know, if you don't ask, you ain't gonna get. But we could at least ask, otherwise, uh, why talk about it at, at budget time? I mean, we can present them the tens of thousands of dollars we pay for the tax cert cases to preserve their budget, and maybe they can contribute. I don't want to go to a board meeting. I'll go percent. to a board sure. event meeting with you and present it to them. Have a beer afterward. What's that? Yeah, yeah sure. sure. <laughs> Look, the other thing is this. Agreement. Wait a minute. Okay, I'm sorry. This is this pertains to uh, facilities. This is not. This doesn't pertain to anything. This is a, a shared um, agreement that we would share each other's uh, facilities. Um, and we both benefit from it. Um, what it basically means is, um, uh, you know, we use the auditorium. They're not going to charge us for the custodian or the um, uh, property manager or somebody to watch over us and vice versa with us. So that's basically what this has been over the past few years. This agreement provides that we name the uh, uh, school board as an additional insured on our insurance policy. We should check as to whether, in fact, we do it. Or maybe. Are you asking me to check? Well, I think you've had the contact with the Spain agency. If you want, I'll be happy to call them. But uh, if you're calling them, this is paragraph uh, uh, 11. What do you want me to ask? If we have been doing it, or? Well. I don't care whether we have, we're supposed to under the agreement, so we ought to in the future, if we haven't, and they're supposed to name us in their insurance policy. It's a reciprocal provision. Just in case something happens, I want to make sure that we've complied with the agreement. Okay. okay. And do we have to provide that to them that the same? Absolutely. New York Could State he speak to the, the microphone? I've certainly never seen it in the years I've been on the board. I know that. Uh, on buildings and uh, the uh, building inspector always gets uh, something from an insurance company uh, saying that uh, we're, we're named and insured, but I have no idea as to uh, whether we get something from the school board. John, maybe you can check with Joan as to whether she's seen anything and uh, maybe we should call the uh, school board and uh, the administrative person. and. Ask if we are named just as we're checking. The audience. In the audience. Are you guys all set? Uh, do we vote on that? Uh, all in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, so moved. We did vote. All right. Elizabeth, we can't approve the next item, Tom. Okay. She's working at the prison tonight, so we're going to hold that over. Okay. Uh, item 14, uh, the resolution accepting the bid for the cemetery mower. Item 14. Uh, second, okay. we'll any discussion. Do we have any other bids? No? Okay. What is the bid we have? 301. Good. Okay, um, any discussion on that? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? It's so moved. Um, we're going to go backwards. We I'm have... i one piece of business. Yeah, we're going to have a 
we also are missing a piece of discussion or uh, presentation, so we'll do that first. Right. Hey guys. We have a public hearing. So uh, Christian, you set? Where are you? Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. So uh, we are going to follow up at this point um, with uh, our CEO uh, presentation of changes needed to implement the green building code process from uh, Christian Fekete. And in the process, we will follow up with item eight from business. So, Christian. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I uh, I did some work on on the uh, what is needed to uh, actually implement this new uh, green uh, standards. Uh, the first thing I want to say is that the uh, the International um, Code Council, which is the body who actually uh, writes the uh, New York State Building Codes uh, or the United States Building Codes is actually um, in the process of um, um, putting out its own uh, green standards for review and public uh, public comment. Um, probably won't happen in 2014, but uh, probably in 2015 or close to that. Um, uh, so. We're not um, far behind. Uh, uh, the what I said last time is uh, basically that we have a, a few standards to look at, to look uh, um, at also at other communities. Uh, we have to um, uh, create our own standards, but most of it is already pretty much in the pipelines of what's going to be uh, needed so um, um, by by the United States uh, all over the country uh, within a couple of years so um, that being said I think that there's a lot of um, uh, educating reach out that we need to do so that's that would take uh, some time um, the standards by which we uh, will review the applications and uh, is really the, uh, the hurdle that I think m would uh, need more digging, at least from my point of view. Uh, how do we uh, how do we view um, the uh, the proposals? Um, what level of green are we uh, expecting to um, uh, enforce? Um, and how do the architects, the applicants, um, certify that they? are reaching these levels. Um, these standards are, I think, what we need, we're going to spend the most time to, to adjust with what's coming, prepare the town for what's coming, and inform the, uh, the local uh, businesses and, you know, ourselves here. Are there any upcoming seminars for building and, and zoning enforcement officers? We just had one this last weekend. This last week, um, and so that's where that's where I get my information as to what was coming in, in a year or so. Uh, the the main um, item that is um, going to be the bulk of the of the green standards is has to do with energy um, savings. How to make our houses more uh, tight, uh, more insulated, better windows, better. Air, uh, uh, air flow, air circulation control, um, less of a uh, uh, site plan, site uh, uh, design, and all these these things. I think that the the, the focus is going to be on how to save energy. Um, so that that will be the biggest piece of it. I had somebody ask if it was going to be difficult for builders to access those materials from construction people. So I checked with Williams and their windows and doors that they carry now are LEED certified. And well, well they, that's, that's and Energy Star. Right, right. right. They, so they, they said that the, it, to their knowledge, no one should have a problem accessing the, the materials that they need. Right. Right. I would say probably 75% of what is required to have a complete lead rating to the level of what's in the code today is available. Mm -hmm. So the question is, how much would it cost to add this additional 15%? Is that something that we want to 
do on our own or or not um, and how do we review these um, that's that's what we're talking about um, so I have a question I don't know if you um, if you put a moratorium in place if it's been voted or yet not or yet not. no I was oh, waiting yeah. for you to come up we we're waiting okay. for you so all right um, I so, think uh, that that if we plan on six months I think we should we're, we should be well ahead of uh, the game by then um, but there, there's an option I just want to make it clear. there was an option to go towards the star energy mm -hmm. not stay with lead but that was something that I believe is part of this whole thing right. so we were not yeah. like honest if somebody wanted to go lead that's fine but there were other standards that they could follow also so this is all part of this process of what we want to find out right right yeah. right the, the, um, energy star is part of uh, the requirement for the nice cert a, a New York State energy um, recovery it's like a central Hudson kind of uh, um, out, offshoot um, so yeah it is uh, it, it is part of energy start is one of the bases of any and all the codes that are available yeah definitely all right uh, so um, anything to add from anybody no okay the CAB, what are your thoughts on this? You have to come up to speak, though. I'm sorry, Meg. Meg Crawford, I'm a member of the CAB, and I have a question for Christian. You said 75% of it is easily accessible, and it all deals with energy. What about water efficiency? That's, the, I mean, that, those are also issues of, of uh, green that the board will have to decide which one they want to incorporate. What I was saying is that the, um, the building code that is coming up addresses mostly um, the issues of energy cons conservation. As opposed to water conservation. As opposed Meg, to can I ask you what you mean by that? Do you mean water Low recycling? flush toilets. Flush low uh, use in shower heads, all of which will decrease not only the amount of water we use, but also the amount of wastewater that's created. Right. Water harvesting, all these mm -hmm. things are definitely um, part of the whole green package. Mm -hmm. The question is, you know, do we want to impose that or, or not? And how, how do we do that? Um, so... Christian, the lead, the lead, the lead level that is in the code today requires that we at least look at these issues that are um, adding on to uh, to uh, to total a certain number of a certain number of credit. It's pretty, you know, it's, it's up there. What we have in the code today is 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 pretty ambitious. So I, I may not understand. I I thought that w w what we were going to talk about tonight was. How long it, does it take to figure out how to the process to administer the the green building code? That's what he said. He thought we were good if we did six months. So okay, but but I heard education. I heard that we and and I'm not sure that we've ever been in the business of educating people on on the codes. Well, I don't. Think well, I think that 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 personally, I think when you when you. Uh, it's not personally. Actually, it's like when you uh, when you create a change in an organization, in a community, you have to reach out and explain what you're doing, and why you're doing it, and convince people that it's a good thing. That's why we have you know these public uh, uh, hearings and all these debates. So that's what I mean by educating. Okay. Um, but I disagree a little bit, Bruce, or maybe it's not even a, a disagreement, but. For me, as a community member, not as a town board member, whenever I came in downstairs, it was a learning experience and education for me. What do I need to put up a fence? What do I need if I'm going to have a pool? But that's, that's from the, the resident, that's an incentive or initiated by the resident who wants to do something, right? It's not our obligation to go out and generally educate no, people. No, I think we, if we would do all the regular sources, post it on the web, put it out in the do all, press. Do all the stuff that we do now? Yeah. Okay. The, I, I was getting the impression that we were going to do something different. Um, were, were you? No. no. Well, that's what I was yeah, getting. Yeah, I was hoping. No. Um, 
You're going to run make a workshop, it. Bruce. Yeah, my other, my other concern, just so you understand, is I think we have the codes or the levels and everything in there. I don't think we're debating those, are we? I, I don't think we're changing that. I think we were saying how to, I, back to the original problem of how do we administer the code that we've already adopted. Or <clears throat> we, can't, we can't really administer it the way it's written right now. Because so, because of um, the certification requirements that are part of the of the of the code today, you cannot certify a building that before it actually is um, lived in for a while. Because you have to take it, air test. I, I, I understand. I understand that the so, catch twenty two with that. But what I'm having a problem with is I got the impression that we were going to change the levels that were in there. I thought you were inferring that we were going to be changing what we've already decided as the gold, platinum, whatever those, those things are in the code. And that, are you saying that or not? I think we that, that, discussed that's that. What, that's, that's what we're talking we about. That's what we're talking about. Yeah. Okay, that, that's where I think we're off track. I think, I think what we're here for is to figure out the process to, that we need to do to enforce the code that we have. I think that's what our original mission we was here. I don't think we were debating the, the green building code that we adopted three years ago, three and a quarter years ago. Well, I, there's no way that I can, right now, give a, a building permit, um, you know, to anybody who comes with uh, a set of drawings uh, today. I can't. I can't Be because do that. of the the CO thing and the yeah that kind of stuff. Yeah. But that's that's procedural. That's not the content of the green building code. Yes, it is. How is that? Well, because there is some processes in that lead um, certification uh, uh, pathway that that are required. But but I thought the point of this was that we were supposed to be able to determine that the engineering going into the structure should be suitable to meet this level, this level, or this level. And that, that that was the real key to this. It's the checklist that they have to go through, and right. then they live in the house. And then they can apply to have it we can, certified we can, we can after certainly, they can uh, certainly uh, uh, sit down and go over it so that you, know, you can see what the extent of the requirements are. I don't know that it's really the time to do that now, because there is education that needs to take place, actually, as to you know what what what's in the code means to you know to everybody. Um, so that's my point of view. Um, so I mean, I'm kind of I mean, right? The, the, yeah, I thought the idea, the problem was the implementation of of the zoning that we adopted three years ago, not so much changing the zoning that we already had put in place back then. Right. So we. So, but, but, but I, well, I think I heard you say that you, we, there's a consideration to change the. the well, you know, to, talking to, talking to, obviously, there's, um, what I, what I understand is that we're not all everybody on the same page. We don't understand exactly what's involved with this. Everybody is not on the same page, and I think that's a problem because for us. To, to say, you, you know, you can't get a building permit because you're not LEED certified is... You won't know you're LEED certified until you got a CO anyways. Is I can't give them a CO, I can't, you know, it... it, it well, the lead the way it's written in the code is, is requires certain things that, that if you want to enforce it, you have to be aware of what you want to enforce. I don't think you are. Is it a question of I, I think it's going to be very expensive, and yeah, it's, it, and it's possible that no, you're going to end up with, with, with lawsuits. That's all I'm saying. I just want to raise your attention uh, on that point. If you want to enforce it, I'll enforce it for you. I mean, that's what I do. But, but I think it's, you have to be aware of what, what's coming up. That's all. Chris, would you make that point, please? I, Christian, I think all we really asked for was how do we change it from lead certified to lead certifiable? What process do we need to do that? And then we could move ahead. Because then your process would well, work. Well, we have to look at what the, you know, uh, 
it's we certifiable have, have rather pick, than certified. We have to pick all the points of the lead certification. There's lead certification. There's it's it's very involved. The way it's in the code, it's extremely involved. There's like three different codes that are that are possible to use. So you know, how do we how do we um, uh, enforce? How do we review that a builder who comes with a, 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 a you know a plan set of plan meets the meets the requirement? If you don't go through the U.S. Green Building Council because it's very expensive for the for for, for the applicant, how do we do it? That's that we need to talk about this. I mean, it's very concrete. I mean, how do we, you know? So, so how long does it is, it, is that going to take to to look at it and and find a uh, an alternative if we decide to 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 uh, to uh, write down our own code um, and create our own standards and all this stuff? I think it's going to take six months. Okay. Hmm. So, are we talking about redesigning the code or not? We have to look at it really, really clearly and, and decide, you know. I'm not sure we really know enough about it uh, to make an intelligent decision. I, I think some board member has to take this project on uh, to work with uh, Christian, Ed, Michael can, right? Trimble, because otherwise it, it's just n never going to get done. And uh, uh, so there, there has to be a board member who is well, uh, working one, on this project. One um, proposition, and I, I don't know, Michael Trimble is here. Would this be appropriate to bring fold within our zoning review group and work it out there? <laughs> Well, mm. obviously, you know, we would have to pay for professional services. Yes, I, I, and I'm, I'm not advocating uh, that we don't, but it seems like it's the right uh, board heads. It's a place to start. Yes. And there, I think it is going to become more involved in terms of the actual nuts and bolts of how we're going to implement this because it's going to be a lot easier. So I'll email the group about it and we can yeah I don't think um, uh, yeah it's it's one of those obstacles we hit with the new zoning yeah. but um, but uh, in the meantime there's people who want to move forward on our projects so uh, well they are aren't they we're just I, I don't think they are are they're they not. everybody's set of freeze because of this they're not. that's what they're the not more, issuing building permits no. that, that's the problem we don't with, have a moratorium right now right so it's 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 the uh, you know, well, I think so that we're thinking of initiating the moratorium tonight, which would allow any outstanding building permits to be processed. Is that correct? It, I, I think that's it, what we're talking about. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's you to tell me what yeah. you know what it means, uh, really. And I, I'm getting the impression that's uh, backed up by the by the planning board also. Yeah, so. I'm, okay, that's you know what okay, I, I'm actually that's a good point because. Sorry, what was the point? <laughs> We've got to get to the public hearing to hear some comments on this. So okay. uh, thanks, Christian. You, the presentation was made very well. Thank you. Um, but I think we've got to wait for Bruce to come back, and we'll open up the public hearing for that. But thanks. Thank you, Christian. So uh, moving on to item G in the agenda is a public hearing on the proposed local law for 2013, a local law imposing a six-month moratorium on the implementation of a pro the provisions of um, section 125.61 of the town of Rhinebeck code relating to green building standards. So at this point in time, we'll open the floor to public comment. This is a public hearing, um, and um, it's really not a point for uh, the board to engage in a back and forth with the public, but rather uh, an opportunity to hear uh, public comment on the proposed law. So the floor is open for public comment. I'm Michael Trimble, I'm with the Planning Board. Uh, we had a special meeting tonight at 6.30 at the request of the Town Board to give you a recommendation on whether or not we felt this moratorium should be approved by the Town Board. We had six of our seven members were present and uh, the vote was six in favor of recommending the Town Board do indeed adopt this six-month moratorium on this section of our zoning law. 
Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Michael. Okay. Any public comments on this? Okay. Here, I hear some it's seats moving. Hi, I'm speaking as a member of the CAB, but I'm speaking for myself because basically I feel very confused about this whole thing. I feel like the, it, I feel from what you said and from what the board said that the way the law is written now, it is very, very difficult for a developer, a resident, or anybody else to come in here and know what they need in order to, to meet standards. And I think just postponing this law for implementation six months down the line without making a, changing that law so it's clear, to me, doesn't make any sense. That's all. <laughs> all right, any further comments? Okay. So a uh, motion and second to uh, close the public hearing. Motion. Second. Um, all in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, that's so moved. Um, we'll move on to item eight for business items, and uh, that is a resolution to adopt the local law imposing a six-month moratorium on the implementation of the provisions of section 125.61 of the town of Rhinebeck code relating to the green building standards. Uh, motion and second. Motion. Okay. Uh, any discussion? Just, uh, uh, I, I think Meg is right. The situation is very confused, and I'm hearing different things. I think it's a great idea that this committee is, that uh, uh, is thinking ab about changes, if any, to the code, uh, run with this. Uh, and uh, uh, I, I think it's a very complex issue. And it, it may be simple in that we just say leads, you got to be lead certified, maybe as simple as that. It may be, though, I've heard things saying, well, we need uh, unique modifications for a small town, uh, which is a much more involved process. So I think people on your committee, Elizabeth and Tom, really have to dig into what the leads process really is and uh, I would suggest maybe you uh, uh, have a group of architects uh, in with Christian to go through it. Uh, I'm sure Bob Fox will uh, uh, be generous with his time and um, he is an expert in uh, uh, leads. Um, and then report back once you gauge the dimensions of uh, the problem. I think I, uh, that Meg made a good point too that this six months should be utilized to what is it that we're asking for and how do we make that clear. That's part of what this six months will lead to, I would think. The zoning review group is a really functions really well and we'll float it out there and get some feedback and be able to report back pretty quickly on how we can begin to tackle this. Do you think David Anton would be I don't think we should I, don't I think, think we, we should, should be mentioning names. We should really? Yeah, yeah, yeah let's know. um He's a member of the CAB, that's why I thought. Yeah, well, let's uh okay. what I want to do is have the zoning review group specifically um with Christian, you know, you need, probably need to join us to include, especially the uh or land use attorney to give us some guidance on where to go with this because it yes. is confusing. So okay, uh, because of that, um, uh, we'll, I'll wait for feed. I want to wait for feedback from him and give, get some guidance from. We'll get it on our next and uh, so on. agenda so, and set a meeting. Uh, the, the the six month that you know the six month time frame is not to say that we can't cut that off sooner whether it's three months or whatever. So it doesn't mean it's going to be going on for six months. We want to give it enough time so that we don't have to keep redoing a new moratorium every whatever. So uh, anyways, that's where I stand on any other comments. So if there's no other comments. We have a motion and second to approve. Do um, you want a roll call? So uh, all right, all in favor, aye. 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 Um, opposed, so it's so moved. 
So motion is approved. Um, and um, that's it. For, we're moving on to items for discussion. No, we have one more. Um, what did I do? Board of Assessment Review appointees. Did okay. On here? Did we? Uh, it's not on here, right? We, it just didn't make yeah. it. Yeah. We need to uh, do it. Go ahead. We have a can add the item for. Like minutes. Yeah. Um, we have one more business item. Um, we don't have a resolution prepared. Somehow it, it, it missed. I apologize. We uh, met with and, and uh, need to vote on appointing two members to our Board of Assessment Review. Um, I have to get the term. I'm sorry. Would you like me to make a motion for it? Yeah. Um, bear with me. I just I'm looking for the term information. Um, we would I would like to make a motion to appoint uh, Irene McPherson to the Board of Assessment <coughs> Review to fill a seat uh, term expiring September 30th, uh, 2016, and Dana Goldberg to uh, the Board of Assessment Review to fill another vacant seat with a term expiring. September 30th, 2014. Both were interviewed by the entire board. So there's a motion. Second. Uh, any discussion? Thank well, them for stepping up and volunteering. That's yeah. good. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? That's so moved. Thank you. So we have a full board of assessment review. Okay. Uh, item one for discussion is setting a date to meet with the potential uh, special prosecutors. Right, we've prepared a uh, ad <coughs> and I've prepared draft letters to send to uh, uh, special prosecutors in neighboring towns. We just need a uh, uh, date uh, probably 15 days from now as to uh, when uh, uh, we put the ad in, well, I guess maybe 10 days in the ad, and uh, we need a date for the uh, letter. Uh, so could we set a date uh, to meet with uh, people and learn more about the uh, special prosecutor? Sure. Do you have any dates that you're proposing? Oh, what about uh, the uh, around the 14th, uh, week of the 13th? We have a town board meeting Monday uh, night. I guess we could do it on the afternoon of the 10th. We could do it on the 14th. Early afternoon of the 10th is fine. That's a Friday afternoon. Uh, May 10th. Yeah, okay. We can do it the 9th. What about the 14th? Tuesday the 14th? Ninth is fine for me. Ninth is preferable for me. I'll be coming back late on the 14th. Bruce, Tom, can you? Ninth or four, 14th, I have a problem with. Ninth is fine. I'm Eight. sorry? Ninth or 10th are fine with me. 14th isn't. 10th or 15th? I mean, 9th or 15th? Ninth. Ninth is good with me so far. I can't do the 9th. No. Thought you I said you could do, do the it. 10th. <laughs> I can't do the 10th either. I can't do the 10th. What about Wednesday the 15th? I can do it. What about the 8th? Uh, I can do it the 8th. I can do it the 8th. I don't know if that just gives us enough time. Um, well, that gives I guess us we can do the 8th, okay. John. We could put the ad in for the 8th. Let's do it the 8th. You want to do it in the afternoon, uh, starting at 4 o'clock? Yep. It's two weeks, two weeks and two days. We can also, are we allowed to contact people who we've interviewed before or who've ex expressed interest, or does this si si strictly have to, to be done through the newspaper? Yeah, I'm going to reach out to uh, people who have expressed some interest, people who are special prosecutors, in other towns, and we're going to run a general ad. We'll see what. Uh, so we're saying four o'clock on. Yeah. Okay. What's that? Four o'clock. Yeah. 
This is a special, is this a, is this executive session or interviews. A, a workshop or? I think it's probably executive session because we're going to. We're talking about a position. We're talking people. about a position, not a what? specific individual. It should be a workshop. Well, yeah. but we're going to ask about individuals' experience. Uh, I think it's workshop material. I don't think this is anything that the public can't listen to. Fine. Uh, Are we going to make I think offers it, out of this? I think eventually, if we're convinced, yeah, I don't envision another round of interviews. This, this uh, is it. We'll find I thought out. we were gathering information to decide what we wanted to do. Right, but we, I assume that if we decide to go ahead, out of this, this interview process or educational process, we'll pick the person and not go for another round and another uh, delay. The, the problem we have is if we bill it as a workshop and for information gathering, then people sometimes are hesitant to give information because it gives it hurts their competitive advantage or it, or then, whatever. Then, this is what we went through with the engineers. Then let's call it an interview. It's then it's normally done in private. Those are personnel actions, and we don't do that publicly for reasons we've stated. We we we're aware of that. We're just discussing the the whether or not it's an interview or information gathering, and it sounds like it's an interview. So if it's an interview, then let's call it an interview. That's fine with me. I think for some fine. reason, Tom, so you, you didn't want to call it because you wanted to have some conversations. I don't know yeah. if you, you've had. Uh, yeah, we're fine. We're, You're all right with we're it? We're fine. Okay. Sounds good to me. So I mean, let's uh, call it an interview. Executive session for interviews. Yeah. All right, four o'clock, right, you guys said? Okay, May 8th at four o'clock. Uh, we, uh, we don't need a motion a second for that, do we, John? All right, we'll set. And we'll ask people You'll to notice. put their resume in by uh, Monday the 6th, is that? Mm -hmm. Sure, or the morning of the 8th. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's. All right, let's move on to uh, county grant for the town IT and pool. It, the, it, it's written oddly. Um, I have a meeting tomorrow with uh, the mayor, with um, Northeast Computer Systems, with a representative from our long-suffering, long-serving tech committee, um, and uh, our clerk to enumerate exactly what we're going to apply for, and we're going to do this with the village. Um, I needed to clarify what, what we need at the at REC. And, um, we need... Um, basically, we need internet access down there, and we need Wi-Fi. Do we need any hardware? We could use a, well, we, we know we need a uh, palm right. reader, oh. and we could use a computer, but... Palm reader, you mean time clock? Yeah. Uh, Does the library have wireless? This is going to, can yes, I just... To but the we, it doesn't come down that far. This isn't reason. going to be installed before the summer. I did talk to uh, the business office about it, um, and they were going to speak with you about it and um, I'm sort of advocating buying a, a, a networkable Dell laptop along with a time clock mechanism. Okay. The, the only, we keep going around on that time clock is supervisor's office. It's not rec. So we, we've gone through this before. Budget-wise. Budget-wise. Budget yeah. I'm missing it. It's just a budget, a funding issue for it, because it, it pertains to, uh, you know, employee tracking. So. Okay, so it's just, we're talking about a line, yeah. where, how it's lined. I'm talking about what do we want. Yeah. Um, okay. okay. All right. So, so we'll so report back that we have to get that grant in by uh, early j June. But you're also talking about uh, wireless, like a router type thing that you want to do, right? So Here? Down at the pool, it looks like. No? I think they're, uh, Shelley and Kim are looking into that too. We have to have that up in a month. The, gr the money for this grant isn't coming through until at yeah. least September. So mm -hmm. we've got to get them, I think, a phone line or. There or, is one down there. They're, they're looking into it and All it's right. not going to be a big deal. We'll have to probably approve that at our next town board meeting. Bruce, you'll meet with them about that too. Okay. Just God stop bless Would it be possible to get a booster for the library to get the wireless down there? I don't think, <coughs> you know, the other thing we talked about is do we want uh, Wi-Fi down there? Do we want lifeguards on phones? Do we want people to be able to? 
we don't want lifeguards on the phones, right? But we can, it's Wi-Fi is probably good for. I don't think, yeah, I don't know that. We, just, just so you know, we have a, a, uh, a term of condition or terms of, of work are you can't use your phone. You can't yeah, use I've never while you're on duty. I've never seen lifeguards using so, them when they're on um, duty. I've always yeah. seen them being attacked. No, it, it, I mean, one of the things we're working on down there is, is oh, it, a family-friendly kind of place, and, and some people would like to be able to bring their computer down there. Well, let me just say, I don't know it. that that falls under uh, county grants for workplace efficiencies. So yeah, I'm I agree just going to put it out there. I agree with that. But, I don't know that I feel but right But if we're going to put internet down there for the time clock, then we might want right. to I think that should be, that should on, be on our dime. So. And I agree. So, uh, okay. Um, transfer station, internet connection. Um, Joe and I have been going around, and I'm going to call Frontier tomorrow and see if we can get, get it for what they advertise rather than the, the building rate, commercial rate. So. Right. Appreciate it. Um, any uh, public comment? I think Joel left, so. Uh, <laughs> oh, motion to adjourn. To adjourn. <laughs> Second. Second. Uh, all in favor, aye. Aye. <laughs> so, oh, it was wicked. God knows what I'm talking about.